Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and this is another Try Hack Me video. Today I want to be showcasing the Dog Cat Room that came out just a few days ago, right? I think it was actually like April 17th and the time recording is April 22nd. So we'll see how we do. It looks like we have to join this room. I've got it up here on my screen and I believe this is a free room so we can access it totally just fine. I'm connected with my John Hammond YouTube account that is free and I guess I, I should clear out some of the stuff from my other video. My bad. <laughs> trying to knock a few out today trying to get trying to get back to it so let's make a directory dog cat and let's head over there let's uh sort of readme file so we've got some notes that we can keep track of and i'll call this dog cat um the ip address i just like to keep track of as a little environment variable or just a variable that i could use and reuse pretty easily so let's go ahead and do this it says uh, i made a website for viewing cat and dog images with php if you're feeling down come look at dogs and cats the machine may take a few minutes to fully start up Okay, so not a whole lot of answers or guided, uh, uh, I guess a walkthrough here. It's more of a challenge room. It says, what's flag one, what's flag two, what's flag three, what's flag four? So we are just off of the races kind of on our own. So let's do our own thing. Let's uh, let's go see if this machine is up. Uh, I guess I'll ping this guy. Uh, let's export this guy. That, and then let's ping our IP address. Good. Is he up and available? He is, okay. Dog cat. A gallery of various dogs or cats. What would you like to see? I'd like to see a dog, please. Oh, oh this is wonderful. How many dogs does it have? Oh my gosh. This is the real YouTube content you guys came for. <laughs> How we got any cute cats? My girlfriend and I are gonna get a dog. We are that's is a ginormous image holy cat i don't want i don't want that that's not a dog that's just white space we want to we want to get a shiba inu okay let's go find out what's really going on here if i look at the url we've got view equals dog which is kind of peculiar because maybe we could view some interesting things um the view looks to be a variable which seems to be being set to kind of our option here if i set it to a dog or a cat um maybe we could view maybe the home page like index uh, only dogs or cats are allowed. That's annoying. Cat. Dog. Those work. What about... Um, I guess I can't, like... You can't do some local file inclusion all the way up to etc. password in this case. Because I think it's probably adding a .php extension on here. So what this is doing, though, if it is adding a PHP extension, what we could abuse are some of the PHP local file inclusion tricks and techniques where we can say uh, PHP LFI filter because we could supply a filter for what we uh, might be looking for. And that way we won't have it interpret the actual PHP tags. We could perhaps include a... Uh, any resource that we really, really wanted to and encode it with base64. So that way, when it's encoded in base64, we won't see the real um, base60, real PHP tags being interpreted and evaluated by the server. We'll see them as text that we can go ahead and manipulate and, and access. So let's just steal this syntax. Uh, I always go to this resource. I always have to Google, find it. Uh, Payload All The Things has it just as well, but I always end up looking for that. I don't play darts.com application security site. So let's try to view that syntax for a PHP filter, convert base64 and code. Um, and I probably should have got the rest of it there. I need to specify a resource. Yeah, resource equals, and then what we want to actually see. So resource, let's try it for dog. And it looks like we have some base64 encoded. So that would work for us. Let's go ahead and echo that base64 string into our base64 decoder. And it says image source dogs and a random, okay, it looks like there are 10 images and they're all JPEGs. Uh, interesting. Let's see if we could actually access that index.php now. Uh, only cats or dogs are allowed. Um, can I, does dog have to be included in that? How does that work? Maybe if we ask for dog, but we also went to a parent directory, so we were to move up, could we still access index? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so index.php now has all of that. So let's try and echo that into base64 tag D. Cool, okay, so now we have the PHP source code. Let's redirect this to an index.php and let's go ahead and sub all that so we can see it with real highlighting. 
view cat or dog, just as we saw, and it has to contain the string dog or cat, return string position, and it gets, oh, and it also includes the extension. If the extension is set with a get variable, oh, we can control that, it will use that, otherwise it will specify .php. Oh, okay, so we could access a lot here because if we can control the extension and it's not going to add anything else, maybe we could verify anything that we, we could read out anything that we particularly wanted to. Let's try that. We could, um, oh, it needs to have dog in the string, right? An extension could be anything. It will include it. So without using our filter, now that we've got the source code of the page, maybe we could include dog up, 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 up to et cetera password. And let's actually use the ampersand to specify ex ext should be nothing. And there, were, there we go. Now we've leaked out et cetera password. So we could potentially leak out any files that we wanted to. Maybe, because we have local file inclusion, maybe we could access the log file of this web server and, and see if it's seeing our requests or what headers are included. Because maybe we could actually get our own uh, PHP code executed. We want to elevate what we have from our local file inclusion exploit or this vulnerability and leverage it to remote code execution so we could do some more dangerous stuff, maybe get control of the box. So where would that be? Var, uh, Apache, access.log? Nope, okay, that's not it. Is it HTTPD? Now we have to try and determine where we're actually seeing our logs. Apache log files? Var log HTTPD access log access underscore log. Var log, probably need access dot log, nope, Apache 2, oh, okay, there we go, var log Apache 2 access log, now we have a lot of results, we can actually see all of our attempts here, so var, view, dog, etc, 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 and it includes our user agent, my face is in the way, so you can see that here, with any of these actual user agents that I'm supplying, is that it is keeping track of the syntax, and if we were to specify our user agent, maybe we'd be able to actually uh, specify our user agent of PHP code that we would want to execute, if we were to load this page, maybe it'll actually go ahead and execute that for us. Let's try that. I'm going to actually do that in curl, I'm going to have a separate request, so I can kind of make that smart for me. I'll go to this page, just getting the URL itself. I will include my user agent as a header for curl with the tag capital H argument. And we're gonna include PHP syntax in here. So it's gonna be waka waka per question mark uh, PHP, right? Cause it's the opening PHP tag. And then we'll run the system command. And we're gonna end up doing this with uh, an argument that can be passed to the web server. So I'll use that HTTP get variable. The way we can access that is with a PHP variable, but the PHP variable is prefixed with the dollar sign, the same one that bash uses. So if we're using a double quote here, we need to go ahead and escape that string with a backslash. So that way it'll be able to say, user agent equals PHP system backslash dollar sign. And I'll use get with the underscore here, and I'll specify C as the name of my string, the argument that I want to use. I'll close the parentheses to the system call, end that, and then I'll close the PHP tags and end my double quoted string. So now when I go ahead and run this, it should return just the page here, just the index that we were requesting as the home page. But we should have placed this user agent into the Apache actual access logs that we were able to see with our local file inclusion. So because that can read those PHP tags, it'll execute PHP and it'll potentially allow us some command execution. So if I go back to my web browser, we should be able to see this. I'll go ahead and refresh the page and it looks like we have a lot of curl requests, okay? Peculiar, and system says it cannot execute a blank command. That's good because we haven't actually supplied that C variable whatsoever. So, um, I, you, might, you might notice I had to clean up this page. I reset the machine a lot. My IP address is, is different because uh, I broke it. Because when I was trying to get the syntax right, PHP would whine, it would get an error. And then once you get an error with this kind of avenue, this, this route that we're taking, this attack vector, is once you bork the access log, if you have a PHP error, it won't return to you whatsoever. And 
well, now you've completely screwed yourself out of this potential attack vector because you can't get any more PHP in that code because every time you try and read this file, it's going to break. So that's the potential danger and risk in doing this technique. But now we finally got it right. System is going to be able to execute some commands if we were to supply a C value. So I'll try and go ahead and supply as a HTTP variable, I'll use my ampersand here, C equals ID. And now we can actually see the output here. We have dub 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 data, dub 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 data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have code execution. We've leveraged our local file inclusion to remote code execution. So let's see if we can take this technique and go ahead and get a shell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start a little netcat listener. I'll use netcat to LMVP 9999, just quad nine should work for us. And let me just kind of verify that I can get to it. Um, I'll go ahead and check my IP address. So show ton zero, I am 108912. I'll just steal that out here. And I'll see if I can run that command 9999. And looks like it didn't go through to me. Do I have the netcat command available? We don't really know. So other options we could try are using the bash technique. We could try using uh, Python as our reverse shell. So let's go ahead and go down some of those routes. Let's go to uh, pen test monkey reverse shell cheat sheet. Let's grab a Python one. And just for syntax wise, let's see if we can actually get output from Python. I'll use Python tax C. I will do print hello, or just a lot of A's actually. So we'll see if we have that output, seemingly not. Um, we can try that with Python 3. Still nothing, so no output from them. I guess we don't have that. We could try bash, tag C, echo, A, 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 A. So maybe we'll have, be able to execute bash. Looks like we can in that regard. So we could try that bash reverse shell just to try it, just to see. We might not actually get anywhere with that, but I think it's worth a try because Python didn't seem to work out for us. So let's go ahead and modify this string. And I do want that IP address 108912. And we're listening on 9999. So let's go grab this string and try to see if we can actually execute that. Maybe not through the browser, but hey, we'll give it a go. Looks like that failed. Didn't go to our reverse shell. We could try this with a curl. We could try it with requests. Um, just to kind of check all of our dots, I'll try that because uh, this is kind of new. I haven't, I haven't particularly done this room just yet. So forgive me for kind of waiting in the dark. Go ahead and access this page. I don't need that, all that syntax here, but I do wanna go ahead and specify these as arguments. So we just wanna get that URL and we'll say uh, params, cause we'll pass these all as get variables to with, with uh, URL requests. So view can go ahead and equal that. Um, extension can equal nothing because we're supplying our own extension. And let's just say C can go ahead and equal our shell command. Let's see if that will work for us. So we do need requests to be able to do this in Python. I will import requests and then I'll do uh, R equals requests dot get on the home page with our params equal to the params. I'll try and run this. Seemed like it came through and no shell. Okay, so I don't have a reverse shell just yet. What we could try and do is leverage this out to maybe stage our own PHP reverse shell. Um, we could go ahead and simply echo A and just to test and make sure we can write and read things. Let's just call a little test file. Let's try to run this. And now if I go ahead and access this log file, let's change that command to actually cat out test. Okay, now we have that A variable there. So we could potentially build our own PHP shell with maybe some base 64 repeatedly adding things. So let's try that. Let's get a PHP reverse shell. I think I still have mine. I think I still have a uh, copy opt 
PHP reverse shell. Yep, let's just call this a shell.php in our current directory. So let's modify this so we have our own IP address, 10.8.9.112, is that right? I think that's me. I hate when I repeatedly forget these, but it happens to me all the time. 112, and let's go to port 999. 9999. So let's go through every single line in here. Let's actually clear these comments out because I don't care about them all that much. So, and let's, let's actually echo each of these and start to build them into our script. So let's, let's, let's build it out onto the file system and I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and kind of modify, make, make these go away so we can verify. We can read our own shell. So let's do with open shell.php as a handle. Let's do handle.readlines. Um, and let's just say, let's, let's grab base 64 in here so we can go ahead and base 64 encode some of these things. Let's say lines can equal read lines and let's actually strip out all the new lines from this. So I'll do x dot strip for x in our handle read lines. And now let's actually base 64 encode these. So let's do that just in the while loop. So we can go ahead and uh, print the lines that we have all as an array bx is not defined. Oh, sorry. Yep. I don't need that B in there. looks like we have all of our lines as a array or a list. So that's good. Let's try to change this so that we can base64.b64 encode each of these. And now they're all base64 lines. So that works well for us. So now what we can do is we can actually make these arguments real for us and for line in all these base64 encoded lines let's specify the parameters can actually equal echo the line and so I'll use a percent here actually I'll just use format because I think Python 2 has that format right sublime text is set up with Python 2 right now so I know you'll hate me for using Python 2 but uh, that's that's just where we are <laughs> Base 64 line into, and let's add it into uh, revshell.php. And let's include that. So we do that repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. So we could build our shell. And then after that's built, let's go ahead and we should verify what uh, directory we're in before we go through with this. Okay, we are in var html. So when we create a file with the PHP extension in the current directory, it will go ahead and add it and make it publicly accessible for us so we can reach our reverse shell and pull that back. So now after that, let's go ahead and base64 tag d uh, rev shell.php because that's the file name that we've created. And let's redirect that to shell.php. So now we are adding every single line into a rev shell.php file that will are originally base64 decoded. Then we'll go ahead and base64 decode that shell. So we have a shell.php, which is the raw PHP file. If we go ahead and request that, eventually we should be able to go ahead and see, okay, if we echo or ls that shell.php, it should exist for us just by simply running our script and we'll have our reverse shell. Let's try it. Sending a ton of requests to the web server, building out our revshell.php file, renaming that, or at least base64 decoding it, so eventually we do have shell.php. None of these, are they being executed? Yes, they are, because we're requesting that page. Just trying to think in my head, like, is this a valid technique? Will this work for us to get our reverse shell? Taking a little bit of time. I don't know how long it'll take, so we'll pause. Okay, he finished in just under an hour. So if we go back to our page, let's ls shell.php, which does seem to exist. If we were to uh, verify that our netcat is still running, what we could do is we could go to shell.php, and called undefined function PHP set time limit on that guy. So our set time limit must not have worked. 
Are we missing a new line there? Maybe that's the immediate function is failing, so I guess that doesn't work well for us. If I echo nothing to base64 decode, does it work? Yeah, okay. Maybe we could change this up and base64 decode it as we're developing the script. So let's rm rev shell. Go back to our command to remove rev shell.php. Now if I ls, okay, I have shell.php, which we know is broken, and rev shell, which we'll need to add. So let's go ahead and build this all out. Base64 decoding that output and adding it in as needed. Let's wait again. Okay, another one that took just a minute. Um, our rev shell should be created. So we should have rev shell.php. There it is. Let's verify that rev shell. Let's just cat it out. And that is also removing our white space. Why does it do that? It's not adding a new line. We could try to echo an empty line into rev shell.php. Let's try that. Okay, now that we've added a new line, let's go see if we can actually see that in our rev shell.php. Seemingly no new lines. Let's try and run it regardless. Let's go to rev shell.php and that's loading and failing on line 95. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's try another avenue. Do we have wget? Did we get tag H? No. Curl. Curl tag H. Oh, looks like we have curl. Okay, maybe that will work. Let's spin up a server. Python tag M HTTP dot server. Good. And then let's go ahead and rm shell dot PHP if we still have it. And let's download our curl to, uh, what, what is curl to download to a file? I think it's just tack O. Tack O? Yep, okay. So curl HTTP colon colon 10.8.9.1.1.12 port 8000 shell.php and let's redirect that to, or output it, sorry, with tack O shell.php. So it looks like, okay, it retrieved it. And now we should have a shell.php that we should be able to access. That looks like it connected. Okay, excellent. Finally, we have a shell. Let me uh, stabilize this shell. Do we have Python taxi? I don't know why I chose ls to work. We don't have Python. Do we have Python 3? Python 3 is also not found. Okay, so I guess we don't particularly need to stabilize the shell. I guess we'll be working clearly export term equals x term now if i clear okay he's good let's see what we got now we're moving around the file system we were in var dub 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 html and when i saw the output earlier i saw a flag.php so let's just cat that out okay there's our first flag we can go ahead and submit that and now let's go navigate around the file system do we have netcat we don't have netcat Huh. Well, let's just cat flag two. Um, that has that strange name. So let's cat that out. LFI to RCC. Yes, thank you. We did that eventually. I don't know why we... <laughs> What's flag three? So let's try to prevesc. We don't have netcat. We know we have curl. So we could download a little inpeas. Let's, um, let's move or copy or opt linpeas into this directory and let's move into dev shm. Can I run bash? Uh, that was a stupid idea. Oh, I am in dev shm, so I'm just fine. I guess now I just no longer have a prompt because I ran bash. Stupid me. If I exit bash, okay, good. I'm back in my 
back in my thing. Now that we have uh, dev shm and we've got linps over in our web server, let's go ahead and curl that. So HTTP 10.8.9.112.8000 and it's linps.sh. So I'll save that as linps.sh. Taking a sweet time. Looks like he's got it. So let's mark that as executable. And now let's run linps.sh and we'll tee that to linlog just so we have a log copy of it. And I cannot. Why can I not execute that? I made it executable. That's weird to me. Cat linps. Is that not all of it? Okay, I guess we'll do some manual enumeration. What can I run as sudo? Ah, uh, env. What does that let me do? Oh, it just displays everything. Can I GTFO bins that? GTFO bins, GitHub, env. Oh, you can just pass it as an argument. So sudo, okay, let's sudo that again and let's bin bash to get regular bash. And now I'm root. I probably didn't need to do root or, or bash so I would not have a shell. Let's just do bin sh so I have my prompt back or I just don't have my prompt whatsoever. That's totally fine. <laughs> let's go check out the root directory and there is flag three. So let's cat that out. Different environments. What is that referring to? Is this, is this? Oh, let's tack LA. Oh, uh, we are at a Docker environment. Okay, so when it's a di different environments, I was kind of curious, uh, did it put us in a Docker container? And I guess we are in a Docker container. So that doesn't particularly help. Um, I guess we can look around and see what else might be odd without using linpeas. Maybe linenum would work or whatever the case may be. Oh. Opt has something called backups, ls, backup.sh, backup.tar. Do we have that as a cron tab? Tacky. Oh, we're in a Docker container, so we probably can't see that. Um, tar xzvf backup, tar. Oh, okay. So it's tarring the entire container. Oh, and it is checking out that backup script. So it might be running that. It might be doing that. What is uh, backup.sh doing? Cat backup.sh. Looks like it is tarring something from outside of the container. Okay, awesome. And that container must be the mounted kind of share that we're in. So what we could do is add some other netcat reverse shell syntax or maybe, maybe bash or whichever one might work. Let's try with netcat. Let's get this guy to see if we can get break out of this container. Um, let me netcat tuck mvp 888 and let's modify this to now bring me to 10.8.9.112 quad 8 and maybe if that is actually being ran we could get some stuff there's no super special characters in there so let's add that to backup.sh Okay. Um, what is that root? Oh, no, that's directory that was just made when I untarred it. Uh, so how does backup.sh look right now? Now it tars everything and has a netcat command to call back to me. That better be the right IP address. It is. Okay. So I guess I'll wait a few minutes and see if I get a shell back. Kind of driving blind here. We could try the bash technique as well. Like if that command fails, then... Oh, 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 it worked. Okay. So now we're in the real file system and we have flag.txt. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. Wow, that took more than it needed to to get that done. But Okay. That was Dogcat. So <laughs> finally did it, right? So a little bit of recap, right? We found the web page. 
that was seemingly doing some file inclusion to be able to read a dog or a cat. And we could abuse that. We, it, it was limiting our file extension um, that we didn't know, admittedly, at first. But once we found that, okay, we could do some local file inclusion with the PHP filter technique, that way we could read the source code of the pages and we could see that we could specify a file extension. If we didn't use the file extension and we left it empty so we could supply our own in the file name, then we would have our any any actual like local file inclusion that we wanted to, not just strictly limited to PHP files. So we could pull up setter password, so we could see the access log for Apache in the web server. And that was the gold mine because then we were able to actually inject some PHP code in and get remote code execution, because PHP will execute and it's server side. So PHP would allow us to uh, put some commands in and run our own commands. And we tried some techniques. Uh, I was bumping around trying to, okay, pull in a reverse shell, uh, maybe echo one with, with stupid echo base 64 techniques. And then eventually we just curled one down and was able to pull one down off of our own website that we hosted. So that was kind of neat. And then uh, now that we had the reverse shell, we tried to pull some other things in to get LinPs, some manual enumeration working or automated enumeration working, and that didn't work. So we opted for our manual enumeration. We could see that the www data user or the user that we were running currently was able to run the env command or the environment command as root with sudo. So we were able to use GTFO bins to see that as a privesc. We could just simply fire up a root shell and then we could escalate. Problem is we were still trapped inside of a Docker container. So we saw, we found, we discovered that backups directory that was pulling some information in and out and running it manually on the host. And that was fantastic because that gave us a route to get out of the Docker container and actually get command execution on the real machine, on the host itself. And that is what that backups.sh allowed us to do. Eventually it called back. Maybe that's running with a cron job or some scheduled task. But with that, we could find the fourth flag and we had root on the actual computer itself. So holy crap, long video, a lot of mistakes, a lot of learning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like button, comment button, subscribe button. You know the drill. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.